Hey guys, my name is Sanjay. Welcome to the Engineer Wannabe YouTube channel. It's been a bit of a while since I've done a video and uh, since I've done a live stream. So I am planning to start again next week, which would be March 2nd. So planning to start uh, live streams next week. Hopefully things work out the way I plan. Uh, but kicking things off with the state of the collection. Uh, so that would be today, February, February 24th. So um, apologies for being away for so long. I've started a new job and, you know, after, during that job, I also had to study quite a bit. So studying and working and uh, things kind of um, just blew by. I can't believe it's almost March and uh, everything is just a bit of a blur. But <laughs> uh, that's a whole other story. Uh, I'm not wearing a wristwatch today, so no wristwatch check. Um, we'll talk about the state of the collection and uh, the, the format. What we're going to do is there are a couple of return watches from last year. Surprise, surprise. We'll go through those and I'll pick the watch I'm going to wear. And then we'll talk about the other watches. There should be a couple of things, uh, a couple of stories to tell. And uh, hopefully you enjoy it. But before we get started, I want to quickly mention uh, that this video is sponsored by Exter. Exter, thank you for sending uh, another few wallets to our household. So most of my family is now decked out with extra wallets and uh, and they're great so we're going to be talking a little bit about that during the, the video and i also want to mention that you are infinitely valuable more important than any other message is that you are infinitely valuable and a great price has been paid for you and i hope you know that um and you're worth it you're precious all right so let's go ahead and do the video okay here we go so first watch i'd like to get the oldest watch in my collection out of the way this is the Seiko SRP843, if I'm not mistaken. It's also known as the Fuyugeshiki. Uh, it's a cocktail time watch that I purchased for my wife uh, for our fourth anniversary. It has bumps and bruises uh, scratched up. Scratched up hard legs and all the rest. <laughs> um, but... 34 mil Seiko that wears really well on, on my wrist. My wrist is 16 centimeters in circumference. Um, and it's a shame that Seiko calls this a ladies watch, but you know, it's a, it's a good watch. It's a great watch. I do really enjoy it and I can't sell it cause it's the, uh, it's our fourth anniversary watch and, uh, it's been five years now. So nine, eight, nine years married to my wife actually very very close we just had our anniversary okay next uh, repeat watch is this guy uh, identical watch just a different dial cocktail time SRP 853 so the same watch same case same bracelet even this has uh, the same bracelet but it's on a strap um, this one has a gold rotor and everything is identical this one was just a beautiful burgundy dial burgundy red ish and uh, was the watch that I wanted at the time and I was super it was super affordable so I just picked it up on a bit of a whim and it stayed so <laughs> there you go 34 mil 34 mil Seiko Presage cocktail time okay and the watch I'm gonna pick to wear today is not the oldest oldest watch in my collection it is actually the Omega Planet Ocean so a couple of funny stories about this um, if you watch the last state of the collection from last year this is one of those returning watches it's the funny story was that I actually purchased the 44 mil uh, Planet Ocean by accident um, that's a bit of a mishap at the AD and I was trying to get myself to you know keep it <laughs> and uh, pass it off as being, oh yeah, it's fine, it's fine. Uh, but thankfully the AD was gracious enough to exchange it back. And this uh, has actually endured the entire year and it's still in my collection. It is one year old. Um, it's got a few bumps and bruises. It's been with me as I detailed vehicles on many, an, many an occasion. I'm supposed to wear that watch. <laughs> now actually, you know, I won't get to try the other watches if I wear it. I'll put this on at the end of the video. So, um, been with me on many, many um, adventures, I guess. Not really adventures, but 
been with me to work many times and um, now I have a desk job and I get to wear this watch which I thought I'd never ever get to wear except maybe on Sundays to church every once in a while so you can see the date is uh, one day behind because I actually was wearing this almost every day this week and I put it down um, two days ago to wear the planned ocean which is why the planned ocean time is set date is set stuff like that um, I wore the planned ocean yesterday and this uh, has a bit of a short power reserve but who cares it's a vintage Ulysses Narden that I got as a gift from my dear friend Walt I'm so grateful uh, that he was uh, willing to give this to me he, he just asked me if I wanted it I said sure yeah um, and uh, sent it to me it had an automatic automatic winding issue and my AD was able to source the part to fix it it was a pricey repair but so worth it this is actually a 33 mil watch look at that long lugs and long uh, big wide bezel so um, it doesn't seem that way but that's a 33 mil watch on my 16 centimeter wrist I am uh, yeah one of my favorite watches in the collection and of course of course it stayed how could it not right <laughs> Uh, thanks again, Walt. Uh, such a lovely gift. I don't deserve you. I don't deserve these gifts because uh, a couple of other gifts. Uh, they are returning watches from last year. This, of course, is from the fabulous Clayton at the Watchdog Podcast in Watch Soup. Uh, my dear friend Clayton, he sent this to me uh, beginning of 2023, I want to say. Beginning or end of 2022. Um, and this has been my watch that I wear when I go out to shovel snow, when I go out to real quick to go get something. This is the one that I wear, I tend to wear. So, uh, looks still looks great. Look at that. You see all the Mario's, uh, and and you know looks great is a very. I'm saying that very loosely because it's. Uh, whew, there's one uh, <laughs> a watch that only um, a mother could love. I guess <laughs> in the sense of its appearance but in every other way it is magnificent just the Easter eggs and just for anyone who is a Nintendo fan this is a magnificent watch and I'm so grateful for it um, I wear it whenever I can it does wear big on me all these uh, watches seem colossal now that I've moved on to smaller watches um, this just seems insanely large on my wrist when I used to think oh the G-Shock Square is actually a very nice fit uh, I don't know about that now <laughs> um, but you know there is some lens distortion uh, in the camera and that is just a small disclaimer but it does look big it is big it's a big watch um, and, and that's my story and I'm sticking to it uh, one more recurring watch which was a gift as well the G-Shock from my dear friend Chaz, the fabulous Chaz from the Berg. Uh, he sent me this magnificent watch, the Bamford Limited Edition G-Shock, um, which is insane. <laughs> it's like 18 mil thick or something like that. Um, yeah, this, this, although I'd like to wear it more often because I like the color, um, what would you call this? Uh, the, the color colorway is that is that right I like the colors even though blue and black clash and you know, I'm not a huge fan of that um, but it's such a big watch and it's unfortunately rare that I do get to wear this watch although man it's such a cool watch um, I'm still extremely grateful that he gave me this watch it would never ever leave my collection um, remember guys I, I value you all so much. I may not have been in touch uh, over the past few months, but I think of you all often. Um, every once in a while, I'll think of, you know, hey, wonder what Calvo IQG is doing right now. Or, you know, hey, I'm wearing his watch, huh? <laughs> or I'm wearing Chaz's watch. Hope Chaz is okay. Or, you know, how's Bobby Legs doing? How's Amon doing? Um, and I'm not naming everyone, off, obviously. But, um, yeah. I, I do miss you guys a lot. I haven't seen Marcus in so long. Man, life life gets busy. <laughs> okay, now let's move on to 
uh, the the watches that came in in on 2023 in the year of 2023 this is the Seiko Grand Seiko SBGW 289 so this has a interesting uh, pinkish dial it's called some people call it the Sakura um, it's got a pinkish textured dial uh, evocative of cherry blossoms and whatnot as Grand Sickle usually likes to uh, talk about uh, solid case back limited edition of 1200 pieces 44 GS case uh, in the 36.5 mil variant so this case actually has been the case I've been clamoring for from Grand Seiko and they chose to release that in uh, I believe 2023 was when it debuted um, yeah I'm pretty sure it was 2023 and uh, I hemmed and hawed about this for a long time because I'm not a huge fan of those hands those um, they're not Dauphine hands anymore and Grand Seiko I, I still believe Grand Seiko's deserve Dauphine hands I don't know why maybe it's a limitation but dolphin or dolphin uh derivative uh, but uh, these these hands are still they're I, they've grown on me but they're not um you know they're not they're not ideal <laughs> let's let's put it that way they're fine they're fine just a missed opportunity you know uh so this is the spgw 289 it comes in a stainless steel uh, bracelet as well uh, but i really like this on this um leather strap well, i said rubber but leather epsom strap from deluxe i think is a nice fit i am tempted by another watch in this collection but um hasn't happened yet so i'm not going to talk about it maybe i'll talk about it at the end of the video uh but before we uh, move on to the other I have three watches left i want to quickly give a shout out to extra who sent me their new copper variant of their wallet this is so cool, <laughs> it's so cool. I'm um, enamored by this. Last time they sent me the lavender or the astral variant and I it was insanely cool. My wife took it and she's been uh, using it since uh, and then this copper version comes out. Oof. You know, there is a um, code out if you want to support the channel. There's a link in the description if you want to let them know that I sent you. Uh, you don't have to do any of that, of course. You don't have to buy one of these if, uh, you don't need it please make sure you need one before you buy one uh be responsible uh <laughs> coming from a watch guy <laughs> i don't need any watches do i <laughs> but extra thank you so much for uh for sharing uh, this w with me uh there is also for uh the let's move this guy now this one's something special um it made me think of uh you know dib <laughs> dib if you're watching this i don't know if you are uh if you're watching this this was the one for you my friend come on Yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> look at that. Uh, they call this the oil slick. My Invicta boys out there, have they got a wallet for you. The oil slick. So yeah, there's something for everyone with extra. And uh, I've been wearing, I've been not wearing, but taking this around with me. This is the, uh, not the Vachetta, but the uh, Cambridge leather, I believe, a Parliament wallet. I, uh, it is taking a beating. I've been, I switched, I switched into this from the Vachetta Parliament wallet. I think I might be going back to the Vachetta. I think I prefer that. Uh, but extra, thank you again. Thank you for sponsoring this video. Back to the state of the collection. Uh, the watch that started off a bit of an implosion in my collection, because I used to have quite a few Grand Seikos. Don't quite anymore. <laughs> um, and it started with this guy here. I blew up my collection in around June of uh, 2023. Pretty much uh, got rid of all my watches and started over. All except for, of course, the um, the uh, planned ocean there. So this is a beautiful, beautiful Defy Skyline in a 36 mil. It's got the faceted case, uh, the dodecagon bezel. Everything is polished. Lots of little polished uh, segments that play with the light it's just a beautiful watch to wear um, the movement is not too impressively decorated so I'm, I am a little disappointed with that but um, it wears like a dream on my wrist I'm so enamored by this one <laughs> enamored word of the day so uh, this is uh, yeah a watch that I wear quite often you can see the date 22nd I just stopped wearing it um, to wear 
Uh, wait, I was, yeah, I was rotating between these two this week. So I'd wear this to work, come home and wear this for the rest of the day. And, um, and yeah, I stopped and I just wore this for a while. And uh, I don't know why I'm telling you all that. Uh, but yes, oh, such a great, great watch. This is what happened, you know, the, the Tudor Royale I used to have um, morphed into this. <laughs> uh, so I really, really enjoyed the Tudor Royale. I think this is just um, eons better. Uh, eons better, that's new too. Uh, but just a beautiful watch. I'm really grateful for it. And uh, that can go right there. Let's move the Invicta Boy out of the way. Oh, look at, look at this Invicta Boy. Let's, uh, yeah, <laughs> let's, let's do that. Okay, uh, one of my favorite, one of, that is probably one of the, one of the stars of the collection. My favorite watch, maybe. Um, but yes, lots, lots less Grand Seikos in the collection. But this, of course, is the SJE093. Um, what can I say about this? The 37 mil faithful recreation of the 62 Mas from 1965. Um, Seiko finally, finally decided to remake a watch uh, that is very popular among enthusiasts. This is, of course, that watch. But um, yeah, they, there was some controversy with the movement, the 6L35. I guess it sounds a lot like the 6R35 and a lot of people were confusing the two. This is, it's not the same movement. Uh, it's not, uh, not even close in terms of how nice the 6L has been, at least for me. This thing is almost keeping dead on time. Um, no positional variance to speak of. Not that I check it too, too often. I just checked at the beginning of my ownership with this. And uh, probably the my favorite diver in the collection, uh, sorry, Planet Ocean. I do love that Planet Ocean, but the Seiko is just, just something else. A beautiful gray dial. So grateful for it. I'm so glad Seiko released this. <laughs> um, it would have been nice if they released it in a, with a smaller, um, the smaller uh, strap because the strap is really long, but it, it works. I really like it on this Artem um, uh, sailcloth strap. So one of the stars of last year, for me at least. And um, finally, last but not least, we have the Tudor Pelagos 39. Uh, it is a very nice watch. I've been wearing it a lot. Again, one of the watches that came with me to work uh, a lot, towards the end of the year at least, of last year. This is uh, grade two titanium, and I like the way the titanium looks as well. There's this sheen to it with the brushing that uh, isn't present in a lot of other watches. Uh, so I really enjoy that. The loom is insane. Um, the bezel is loomed. Everything inside is loomed. Um, and I know like the hands are have less powerful loom than the rest of the watch, which is a little strange, but it's not a huge deal. I am, This was actually the last watch I purchased last year, and it was September of 2023, and I haven't purchased a watch since, which is mind-boggling. <laughs> uh, so it's been five-ish, almost six months, and um yeah I'm, I'm feeling i'm feeling the itch but i'm i think i'm holding strong for now at least i got very close to picking up a medium cartier santos which is uh, on the list at least next up um and it's one of the the watches i'd like to like to add to the collection let me not damage watch here make sure everything's in in uh visibility <laughs> everything is visible so uh, Cartier Santos Medium is one of the watches I'd like to own at some point. Um, maybe, maybe happening this year. I'm not sure. There's of course the Rolex Explorer 36, which is ever, ever present in uh, my want list. Uh, other than that, there's the higher up on on the list, maybe even higher up than the Cartier Santos Medium, would probably be the Grand Seiko SBGW 297, which is the same watch as this guy right here, but it has the same dial or a similar dial to the SBGY003, which is one of the watches that uh, got let go last year. And um, I miss that watch and I love the case in this watch. And I think that's just the perfect amalgamation of those two watches. So chances are really good that that might come in before even the Cartier Santos Medium. So 
quite a few watches out there. I know I mentioned the reversal a few times. I'm, I'm, I'm a little less certain about the reversal now. Um, but yeah, a couple, a couple of things on the go. A couple of things on the want list. But I am really happy with the collection. I also do claim to have turned a new leaf. I'm not uh, buying and selling watches as much anymore. Um, and uh, I, I like that. I'm starting to make more... Um, I'm starting to feel more comfortable with these watches. They feel like they're mine now. And uh, that's a bit of an alien feeling. I've had that here and there, especially with like the SPG Y003, uh, the Planet Ocean I've had on and off a couple of times. So that just feels feels like a you know well-worn pair of boots. You know, some, something you come to. Uh, come <laughs> Something you come home to? I don't know about that. Uh, something you wear all day, I should say. Uh, so... I, I am starting to be very, very happy with the watches that I have, and I'm, I'm really uh, grateful for them. I don't deserve them uh, and, and anything of the sort. It's just, uh, um, you know, uh, amazing that I can enjoy this hobby. Um, I think that's it. So, guys, let me know what you think about the state of the collection. Thank you again, Exter, for, um, for sponsoring us uh, again, sponsoring me again. Uh, remember, there is a code EW2024 if you want to get an additional discount to uh, whatever sale they might be having right now. I think they have an anniversary sale going on right now. Um, but uh, EW2024, and there is a link in the description if you just want to go check it out. But you don't have to. No obligation. Thank you, everyone. You are all infinitely valuable. You're precious and you're worth it. I hope you know that. And I'll see you next week. Bye, everyone.